right, so this is Scorpion. We are going to depopulate a board. Um, so first thing we kind of need to go through and uh, figure out what we want and what we don't want. Um, I'm going to clean completely because both sides of this board have gold has gold on it. So once I depopulate and set aside the stuff that I want, I'm going to put the put this in a solution to take this green coating off and that'll leave me with the gold and then it'll be ready to go in um, to get the gold off. So y'all stay tuned. I'll try to point some of this stuff out to you so you know what it is and uh, kind of show you how to take it off. Rock, 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 bottle on the track, boy. is a little bit bigger here so hopefully y'all can see good I know my my lighting's not the best in the world I got to work on that um, so we have some different components here that I normally collect and some that I don't um, so this is your it's gonna be your IC flat pack or your flat packs it's got legs on all four sides same thing here with this little one same thing here, here. Um, so that's that's one category that I keep. Then I'll also keep my IC chips. IC chips have to have six legs or more to be considered an IC chip. They only have legs on two sides. Um, and I'm watching E-Waste Mike's video that he put out for says five o'clock somewhere. Uh, while this while I'm doing this with y'all. So, it might be easier if I get something pointed out. So, it's got to be at least three legs on both sides. That makes six legs. That makes it an IC chip. Of course, the less legs, normally the smaller it is. So you can see that's got eight. They make them smaller than that. They get teeny tiny. Um, but that's something, those are some of the things that I keep. All these are IC chips here. That's got eight. That's got eight. That's not three legs on one side and a big thing over here. I don't even know what the heck it is, but whatever. Um, I do not see any tantalums unless that is. Uh, tantalums see, seem to be, uh, it's tantalum capacitor. That seems to be about as far as I've gone collecting. Um, I think these are... Um, these little things are, um, I don't remember what they're called. Anyway, some people collect those too. They're normally tiny. Uh, I find it to be a pain in the butt. All of these are crystal oscillators. They come in different sizes and shapes. This is the short. They make them those tall. They sit up here like this instead of being down here. Um, same shape, just comes up. They have them, they're laid over on their side. Um, another flat pack, some more ICs, and see they've got these ICs are the same size as the ones on the other side, but they are wow, three, four, five, six, seven. I think they're eight legs on both sides. I guess technically that would be an IC chip, it's got three legs on both sides, but I'm not gonna cry if I lose that one, it's just tiny. Um, but these people collect these too if you can even see them they're like dark gray and brown um, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head I'm sure somebody will drop it in the bottom <coughs> so how to take them off you ask well there's different ways uh, I have found the easiest way for these which is going to be your crystal oscillators is grab them with pliers and just twist them right off of there Uh, you can get paid by weight for them. So we pull all those off, get those done and, and out of the way. 
so Mossad. So then you've got your <clears throat> I see flat packs. This is normally how I do these. Seems to be the easiest. I have seen people completely strip a board using a uh, air chisel, and I do have one. Um, later I may do that, but I'm in my house. And I'm not going to bring my air compressor and air chisel in the house to do this. And I really don't like tearing the chips up either. Um, so there's one of those. Um, and you don't really have to go all the way around like that. Let's find another one. Just put that screwdriver right there close to the chip and drag. Push down, drag. push down and drag and you can run the screwdriver underneath it and start it up you don't have to do all four sides you can do three wiggle it off of there grab it with pliers rip it off whichever way makes you happy as they get bigger the legs get a little stronger you may have to go across a couple times and I just do this with a screwdriver it's my preference uh, carpenter's knife works stuff like that but if you're going to use a carpenter's knife um, suggestion you may want to put gloves on and definitely most definitely make sure so you can twist them off when you get to the last your fingers are out of the way because uh, they can get quite painful so that's the flat packs. IC chips are basically the same. Just push down and drag. These two do tend to have stronger legs on them. You get one side done. See, he's still holding on there. That's one way to get those off. Another way is to grab them with needle nose. See if I can turn it so you can see. Reach down there and grab it on both sides with needle nose and twist. That one actually broke. They don't normally do that, but sometimes they do. You don't have to grab them that hard, just enough to hold on to them. Okay, you can do it with pliers sometimes, especially if they're big. Grab a hold of both sides, squeeze a little bit, and just twist it. Sometimes you may have to twist it back and forth a few times to get it to let go. Personally, I like using the, the needle nose most of the time. For some reason it seems to be cracking these I haven't had that problem before might be because I'm using my new ones and they're they have their sharp teeth on them so not hard just takes a little time so instead of y'all watching me go through all this I'll bring y'all back once I'm done Alright, so I've got everything taken off that I want. Um, here's your pile of IC chips uh, or IC flat packs. Not flat packs. IC chips. Six leg or more. Pretty good little stack there. Uh, this is your flat packs here. So it's a few of those. A couple of them are nice and big. And then this is going to be your crystal oscillators. Um, as I said, I, don't, I think those are called... Um, I used to have some somewhere and it was labeled and I don't see it. But anyway, some people keep those. I, I don't mess with them too much. This right here is going to be your tantalum capacitor. 
They normally have a line on one side, not always. Um, the line indicates the plus side. The biggest thing is your board says C136. So C stands for capacitor. If it doesn't say C, it's not it's not a tantalum capacitor. Um, and then you gotta you gotta find your marking. So I found one of those that I'm willing to keep, pull off and keep. Uh, the rest of it, as I said, it's just it's not worth uh, trying to sort through. They started making stuff so teeny tiny nowadays. I'm not I'm not gonna go through all that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll probably I'm gonna pull these off. <clears throat> These are the plugs. Um, that one actually has gold in it. So it's got gold. I'll send it on. This one's got gold, but I've got no idea how it may come off. I've never tried to pull one of these off before. So it's going to come off in pieces. So I may pull the gold wires. I probably will because it looks like a pretty simple plug. Some of them are still stuck on the board. But the ones that are gold, see that one's not gold, so that'll just go to shred. This one's going to be the same way. And we got one out here on the end. That's not gold either. <coughs> and the rest of it I'll probably scrape off with a putty knife or, or whatever, but then I'll be left with the board with the mask. So I will bring y'all back to show you that. all right so here it is everything is scraped off of there of course you can still see all the solder um but for the most part it's decently smooth so can i put it in like this yes yes i can probably won't take this sticker off the bottom there um will i put it in like this no, probably not. I'm probably going to get this solder off. Um, just because I don't want it holding a bunch of the mask on. Still got to do a little research before I'm truly ready to do this. So this is just kind of preparation. Getting some of the steps done. Getting some stuff close and ready. Um, but basically, you know, I'm going to put this in solution. And this rubber mask gets soft. And comes off the board and you can take a toothbrush or whatever and uh, clean that green mask off of there and uh, just have a, a solid gold plated board on both sides left um, now how can you get some of this uh, solder off there's a chemical you can put it in to get it off uh, it's probably going to try to remove some of this gold um, you can take a little heat and iron and wipe it off get them each spot you know hot and wipe it off you can put it in the oven which is how a lot of people depopulate stuff put it in the oven or some type of heater like that get the whole board nice and warm and then most of your stuff will just wipe right off of it uh, along with most of your solder so Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed. Hope this is informative. Formative. Big words. Me and big words do not get along. Um, but that just kind of shows you, uh, gives you a little information in the direction I will be going with some things later. Um, so, yeah. Stick around long enough and I live long enough, we will uh, definitely get to taking the gold out of and off of things. How to reconstitute it from solution and all that. I've already done a bunch of research on it, but I don't have the chemicals and stuff yet. Hope you all enjoyed. We'll see you next one.